All right, so we are finishing up. Can you guys believe we're finishing up four weeks inside of the program? We are starting week five, which is kind of crazy. And uh, so before we get to our standings, let's hop on the scale and see how you did last week. I have some standings here. So after four full weeks inside of the program, uh, in seventh place, down 0.4 pounds, 0.24%, Ms. Jenna. In sixth place, down 3.2 pounds, 1.34%, Neela. In fifth place, down six pounds, 2.71%, Jean. In fourth place, down eight pounds, 3.58%, Amy. In third place, down 11 pounds, 4.57%, uh, Natasha. And our top three ladies, there's actually a half a percentage that separates all three of you right now. A half a percent from third to first. And actually 0.4, not even a half a percent. So in second place, down 10.4 pounds, 4.94% Janine. And then check out, Janine, how much you're behind Sarah. So Janine, you're at 4.94. In first place, down 14.9 pounds, 4.98. So 0.04% between uh, Sarah and Janine. <laughs> <laughs> this week, like so close, uh, but holding down the top spot, Miss Sarah. Congratulations, almost 15 pounds. Uh, awesome, awesome job. And our top three ladies, all over 10 pounds lost. So amazing job. New decades this week. Natasha is in the 220s. Natasha is in the 220s. Uh, this week, we are going to be talking about habits. This week, we're going to be talking about habits. Because first we form our habits and then our habits form us. So first we form our habits and then our habits form us. And so uh, how do we know what kind of habits we have with our health? How do we know? How do we know if we have fit habits, overweight habits, morbidly obese habits? <laughs> We know by the result in our life. The fruit in our life, the result in our life always reveals the habits that we have. And so when I got started, I was morbidly obese. So what kind of habits did I did I have when I started? Well, I had morbidly obese habits because my habits showed up in my life, hence the size of my butt. And so when we're looking at, when we're looking at our habits, we are where we are because of our habits and our habits, our habits are things that we do without even thinking it. So the way we form a habit is repetition. The way we form a habit is we've done it so many times that now we just do it without thinking about it. And the way I think of a habit is it's kind of like we when we do it, imagine, imagine walking through the woods, okay? And you walk through the woods one time. Would anybody be able to tell that you walked through the woods one time? If they looked in the woods, would they be able to go, wow, someone walked through there one time? Like no one would ever know unless you had a machete and you were like, Whoa. they would never be able to tell. But what if you walked the same path through the woods every day, twice a day for six months? Now, not only would someone be able to tell, but if someone was looking, they would be like, oh, there's a path. They would actually call it a path because there would be a path where stuff had died 
because you have worn a path from using it so many times. And this is the same thing that happens inside of your brain. And I call it a super highway. So when you go do something so many times, but now you can do it without thinking about it. Now you have a super highway. So this is where uh, some of you have driven the same route to your kid's school, to your job, to your uh your parents' house, your your boyfriend's house when you were dating, you've driven the same path that sometimes you can drive it, you can get there, and you can't even remember doing it. Anyone had this happen? You get there and you're like, wow, I don't even remember getting here. Why? Because you were thinking, you were, you know, in your brain and your 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 physical body just kind of took over and you got yourself there, right? Uh, another habit, uh, anyone making lunch, Anytime for your, your, your meal prepping or you're getting stuff ready for a party. And we have a habit of, as we're getting stuff ready, what do we do? We're putting pretzels on the, on, on the, on the grazing table, on the shootery board. We're putting cheese out. We've created a habit that when we're getting stuff ready, we just. So now we might, has anyone put something in your mouth? And all of a sudden you were like, oh crap. Like you spit it out. Cause you were like, I'm not supposed to do that. Anyone done that? Or maybe you didn't spit it out. Maybe you just ate it. But anyone mindlessly put something in your mouth and you didn't think about it until after you were chewing it, <laughs> right? Because we have a habit of mindlessly eating. Uh, and so when it comes to our habits, again, we create a habit by doing something over and over and over again. Uh, let me let me, let me me share this one with you. So all of you have a habit of putting, when you put your shoes on, are you aware that you always put your left foot in first or your right foot in first? When you put your shoes on, you always have one foot you put in first. Like you don't even think about it. You don't even know it. It was probably started from your parents when they would put their shoes on your feet. They probably always put one on first and that's the habit you started. And now you're in adulthood and you put on your shoes and you don't even think about it. Okay. So here's, here's the crazy thing about habits. So a habit is formed through repetition, doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it again. And there's all different kinds of studies shown. There's all different kinds of studies by all different kinds of doctors and scientists and colleges. And, you know, people have cited that it takes 14 to 80 days. I've seen all different kinds of claims. You got to do something 14 days in a row. You got to do something 21 days in a row, 50 days in a row. So uh, it can get confusing when you're trying to look up how many days you have to do something to get a habit. I think, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. But my point is you have to do something a lot of times in a row to form a habit. So here's here's the crazy part. Uh, one of my mentors one time, she was a psycho psycho psychologist and she was doing a study on habits. She was a marriage coach. Well, she was a psychologist, but she specialized in marriage. And so she said, I'm doing this study on habits because she was studying the way spouses react to each other or how we picked up habits from our parents. We watched something happen so many times that we then started to communicate like that. And we learned those communication styles and we did it enough times that now when someone ticks us off, here's how we respond. So our responses, our emotions can even become habitual. And so she said, I'm going to take my shoes for the example. She goes, I put my left foot in my shoe first. She goes, so I'm going to, for the next month, I'm going to put my right foot in first. Do you know it took her 42 days of putting her right foot in first before it became a habit? 42 days of every time she put her shoes on, instead of her left foot first, she'd put her right foot first. So then she continued to do that literally for like the next year. So how many of you think that's a long time? Like one year of doing something would be like, wow. So then after a whole year of doing this, she said, okay, I'm going to switch back. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to my old habit. And do you know when she went back to her old habit, it only took her one week to get back in the habit of doing the left foot first. You ever heard the saying old habits die hard? Because once you have that super highway there, even if you abandon it, you can still tell for a really long time that there was a path there or there was a highway there or there was something that lived there. And so when it comes to our habits and changing our habits, because you will never have 
good health with bad healthy habits. If you want to be fit, we can't keep overweight habits. We can't keep overweight habits. We can't keep unfit habits. We have to develop habits that match the life we want. It's the same thing if you want to have a good marriage. You can't be a negative wife and expect to have a positive marriage. You cannot nag your husband to death and expect that he's going to want to get you flowers. Like those two things don't go together. Uh, if you want to be wealthy, believe it or not, one of the biggest reasons most people are broke is not because of how much money they make. Almost all people with a million dollar net worth never make a six figure income. It has to do with their spending habits. So I grew up poor. I had poor spending habits. So no matter how much money I was broke when I made no money, when I started making a little more money, guess what? I was still broke. And even when I started making millions of dollars, guess what? I was still broke because I had, I spent, my habits were spend everything you make. And I did really well. <laughs> but most people think, no, if I just get, if I just made more money, then I would have more money. No, you wouldn't. Because we all have spending habits, just like we have eating habits, just like we have emotional reactional habits. And so it's figuring out what fluffy habits, what overweight habits, what habits do we have right now that lead us away from what we want versus towards what we want. And so it was doing a habit audit on myself and really getting real with myself and asking myself, what habits do I have that are overweight habits, that are obese habits, that are unfit habits? What habits do I have that are not serving me? So it was a habit of not working out, a habit of not drinking my water. I had a habit of not meal prepping. I had a habit of eating according to my cravings, not according to my goals. I had a habit of, I was a really big social eater. So if I got in social settings, uh, I had a horrible habit of eating in the car. And most people that are health conscious, they don't eat in the car. I would just start asking people that I knew that were fit. So do you eat in the car? They were like, no, never. I was like, wow, they think way differently than I do. But then it started to become obvious. And it, it, was, it was really kind of freeing, if I'm being honest with you. Because there was a point in time when I was fluffy that I really convinced myself I had done everything. I had tried everything, I had done everything, and I was just destined to be this fluffy person. But when I started realizing that, no, Carmen, the people that have the health you want, that have the energy, they're doing things different. It was very freeing because it's like, well, gosh, this is why I don't have what they have because I'm not doing what they do. So it was beginning to uncover these things. And then whenever I would leave the house and I would like, if, if, if I didn't plan and I didn't meal prep, and I found myself out longer, and I didn't have uh, the food, I'd be like, okay, I, okay, channeling healthy Carmen, beep, 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 beep. come in, okay, we need to Google the nearest grocery store, and it was like walking in the grocery store, I'm like, okay, what would the fit Carmen do, she, okay, she would go to the perimeter, she would get the meat, lunch meat, I can't go get lunch meat, she would get an apple, she wouldn't be going to buy the pre-unmeasured stuff that they prepared, and so, again, I'm just using that as an example, but that's the first step in, in starting to reprogram our brain and developing the right habits is finding what are the bad habits that we have? What are the habits that we have right now that are not leading us closer to our goals? Uh, my question for you guys this week, it's a two-part question, okay? So the first part of the question is, how did it feel picking out your goal outfits? And I know we've already talked about that a little bit, but how did it feel picking out your goal outfits? And uh, what is the first thing that you're going to be writing on your habit tracker? Okay. So um, I think the outfits I kind of um, spoke to on Marco Polo, but I'll say it here. I It was really challenging for me um, because I have like the fit that I have had has been like a size six, eight. I've never been smaller. And so even when I was fit, I was like thick fit, you know? So there was just still certain things I would never wear. Um, and there were certain problem areas, but when I did this exercise, I really tried to not think about like where I've been, but where I could potentially get to and just like open that up to anywhere. 
And so I thought of myself as like a size two, which I just can't even fathom. But, um, but I, I, you know, I picked things that I've always found beautiful and I've always been like envious of not being able to wear. And I would, I would look at women and be like, oh, that's so pretty. It's so feminine. And I just, I felt like I could never wear it, but I'm like, well, what if I can, what I'm trying to change my mind, I'm trying to change my mind. So that's how I felt about the outfits and it was challenging, but I think it was just so necessary for me to like open my mind and realize like the ways that I limit myself. Um, and then the habits. So I'm struggling with two main bad habits. Um, well, I mean, actually like three, but I'll focus on two. So the main one is the, um, you know, missing meals. Cause I've noticed it just happened to me two days ago. My husband and I had like a little moment in the morning, <laughs> did not have an appetite. Neither one of us kind of ate. We were like going back and forth bickering. And then we left the house to try to like repair in front of my son, which we did. It was really sweet. But then we were like starving and he, he gets hangry. And so we're like, just pull over, get something to eat. And so he ended up getting a chicken wrap. We ended up getting a falafel wrap for my son. And I'm like, what am I going to eat? Because it's like one o'clock and I haven't eaten anything. And I'm starving. So I had half his falafel wrap. But then I was like, well, what do I count this as? Like, is it three carbs? Because of the chickpeas. I mean, it was just so hard. And I'm like trying to knock off like teaspoons. It just messed me up. So I realized like I'm like, I cannot miss meals because then I'm in a situation where I'm desperate. And I if I'm with my family and we're doing something I don't want to get caught in that situation. So that's one. And the other one is dessert and namely Halloween candy right now, because we went trick or treating and it's sitting up there in the cupboard and I can't stop thinking about it. And I like, I just like the other night I grabbed like one little Butterfinger, Butterfinger is a weakness, but I just, I, I, I want to acknowledge the fact that like dessert is delicious and for me, it's like a little cultural because like we love a little nibble of like either a date or a little piece of chocolate after lunch and dinner. And so I'm trying to think about the fit habits. So for the missing meals, obviously just really focus on getting my timed meals in. For the dessert, I wanted to ask the group and maybe I'll ask later tonight or tomorrow for you guys if you have any like healthy approved on plan, like little recipes of like protein balls or cacao powder, peanut butter balls, or just something that I can have where I, it's still on plan, but I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not going off plan because I decide to have my little something. So that's mine. For picking out my goal outfits, I will say it was a bit, um, like exciting, but I also was like apprehensive at the same time, just because like, it, it feels like when I get there, it's going to be really rewarding. And I have been there before. Um, like when I was like in my twenties, even like in my early like thirties, like I have been there and it was like really fun, like just wearing like pantyhose with like high boots and like cute skirts and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But now that I've reached a weight that I haven't been at in my whole life, like this is the highest that I've ever been. Um, it kind of like makes me feel like, you know, I would like, I know I will get there again, but like when I do get there, it also like makes me feel that like, I worry like losing motivation along the way and like getting back to like another weight. And like this topic of habits really is a great topic because I feel like even like when you were ex explaining about that girl and how like she formed good habits in 42 days and it, it took her to, I mean, it took her 42 days to like, you know, form those good habits. You know, it just makes me think like, okay, like if I just stick to it every single day for a month and a half, like I will be good and like, just like keep going and, and doing well with like, you know, my eating and my working out and all that stuff. Um, and I know like, if I go back, even if I like cheat for like a few days or whatever, or a week, like old habits do die hard. <laughs> it is very true. So 
I just have to really like stick to it. And, um, you know, it was fun picking out the outfits and I do like see myself in those outfits one day again. I really do. Um, and then as far as like the habit tracker, I will say like nibbling for me is a huge, huge one. Like, especially when I'm around, you know, like social gatherings and things like that. Like I nibble and then I begin to cheat on things. And like, that's like definitely something that I need to like stick to and not doing. Um, and like, like me just having like a major sweet tooth. So like, you know, I'm like, I'm more of a sweet person than, than a savory person. Like, I don't care about like, like rice and beef. I care about the apple pie. (laughs) So, um, so that's something that I really need to like stick to, um, is like my sweet tooth and all that stuff. So like, if I can just first get the nibbling down, I can definitely conquer the sweet sweetness with that, like right after, because like, I just, I nibble on sweet stuff. So like, if I just stop the nibbling, like the sweet stuff will follow. So, um, so yeah, so that's like, um, what I have down here. So, (laughs) um, picking out my gold outfits, it was, um, it was great once I started doing it, but, um, at the same time, it was, the challenge was, um, it made me have to think about what do I want to identify as kind of, because it's like, well, what do you want to look like when you can pick whatever? And I was like, I don't know. So I put like sophisticated and elegant, like stuff like, yeah, this is what I want to be, you know? (laughs) Um, And then stuff came up and I was like, oh, that's really cute. And, you know, so you just start pinning everything and they're like, well, you probably like this. And you, I was like, you're right. I do. So um, it was, it was great because it was like no limit you know, like unlimited it, like not, you know, where it's like, well, that jacket is short, but who cares? You know, like you're going to be able to, you know, like I had said that my favorite one was like this little jacket and the pants and stuff. So it was, it was fun once I was like, what do I want to identify as? So starting to mold that in there. And then The first thing on my tracker is kind of scary because it's like you have to start over if you don't check it, you know, (laughs) it's like, what do you want to say? Um, (laughs) um, So it's kind of like which one to pick first because it's like getting my water in before seven and then like going to bed on time, which they kind of mess each other up because when I don't drink enough water, you know, then you're like, I got to drink this water before I can go to bed and then I'll be up all night. So it's kind of like, which one? (laughs) So I guess water probably before seven would be good because I'm always like guys I'm almost done I'm gonna check it off and then I'm sitting here torturing myself knowing I'm gonna be in the toilet all night so uh about the outfits I really actually enjoyed it and it was really fun for me to just think about what um I want to wear again because I when I was thin, I wore different things. Um, so now that um, I'm more of a mom of many, um, my body has changed, but I have these thoughts that like, you know, picking out the things with the belts and the cute jeans and stuff. I, I literally think after six children, who are you kidding? Like, you're not going <laughs> to you're not going to wear that. And I'm like, no, I can, I, I can wear that. And it will um, happen. I just uh, really enjoyed it and definitely had to block out some, you know, negative thoughts about it. But um, the habit tracker is funny because I have a really cute one and I put like all the things on it. (laughs) Like there was like at least 15 things I wanted to change my habits about. Then I read the book Atomic Habits and I was like, I'm doing this like all wrong, you know? (laughs) So I failed miserably, clearly. Um, So I love, and I I love having the one habit that we have to stay consistent with. And mine will probably have to be like planning my meals, knowing what I'm going to eat instead of, uh, I have the things that I can make meals out of 
and I have I have the things for that. But yeah, I need to be consistent in that area of this is what I'm going to eat today. And so, yeah, I can do that for 30 or however many forever. But I just want to, I just want to be able to be uh, more planned. So. All right. So I've been thinking about this while everyone's been going. I'm like, of course I have like so many, like, but there's, um, well, I'll start with the goal outfit. The goal outfit it was, that was easy for me because I'd done it before um, last time. So I actually went back through all my emails and looked at like the outfits I'd sent you last time. And I was like, okay, some of those are okay. Some of those I want to change. But, um, it, you know, I, it was fun picking out outfits and just, it's kind of like dreaming, you know, you're just like dreaming of what you can wear um, once you're to that goal weight. And, you know, something funny that my husband said was, He's like, those aren't you. He's like, you like dark colors and casual. I'm like, it's because I've never been comfortable enough in my own body. And we've been married 26 years. And really, th this has been, you know, like, this is where I'm comfortable. I'm not comfortable in little, thin, tight things. And I want to be. So, you know, and that's what I told him. I'm like, let me get skinny and, and I'll wear them. Cause he's like, you don't wear bright colors or I'm like, it's because black is slimming. <laughs> Not because it's my favorite color. Um, so yeah, so that was, that was fun uh, picking those out. But the first thing on the habit tracker. So I started my own business four years ago after working jobs all my life and getting up early, right? 6.30, 6 a.m., 6.30. And I said, when I start my business, no alarm clock. And that's not been a good thing for me because I sleep till I, I wake up, basically, uh, which is usually 8-ish, 8, 8, 8.30. But then I sit around, I drink coffee, I just lounge around, and then I don't get my workout in early. And before you know it, I need to start working. So then I'm trying to squeeze my workout in sometime throughout the day in between meetings or whatever. Um, so the first thing that's going on my habit tracker is setting my alarm for 7 a.m., getting up, getting my workout in first thing. And um, and I need you girls to hold me accountable to that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is that is my number one first one I need to do because it's, you know, what what happens is I get in the middle of the day and I'm like, I haven't worked out yet. I haven't worked out yet. And it becomes like a stressor, right? Because you're like, crap, I've got to work out today. I didn't work out until seven, almost 7 PM, <laughs> like right before our call. And I'm like, I've got to stop that. I can't, you know, like, you know, I just, I just got to quit. I got to, I got to make this a priority to where this is first thing in the morning and I make it a habit. So that's mine. So for the outfits, um, what I landed on was something that I saw the first week I was working out at the gym and it was just a lady who had a really pretty pink top and it had a twist in the back and she just had very nice arms. And I was like, oh, wow, wouldn't it be great if I looked like that at the end of this program? So that was kind of the first image was that and then just some other things that like I have some beautiful sweaters from like Scotland and Ireland that uh, you know I just I wrote I want to wear them I don't want them to wear me is kind of the idea and then as far as habits Janine I was in the same boat I ran a very successful business for five years but had the opportunity to go back into the corporate world and a completely new and different opportunity that I just could not pass on and um but yeah I I didn't take meetings before 9 a.m. <laughs> for the same reason I'm like I I used to get up at 4 30 to get you know and I used to go to the gym every day too so and um you know it's interesting because I was also thinking about um habits and a lot about habits include behavior and I realized how much I was missing going to the gym but I realized I was sacrificing some devotional time um, to get to the gym because I'm sleeping in. So that's going to be my habit is just get up a little earlier because I have a stack of books I need to read, um, for church and for other things. And, um, 
just carve out some time in the morning before I go work out, put my head on straight uh, with some devotional time. Hi, ladies. <laughs> um, first of all, the outfit, I didn't choose any. Uh, but my biggest fear is um wearing the clothes, like to wear the clothes without like the top on. Because I don't feel comfortable with my arm. I feel like I have a saggy arm, you know? Like, I need, <laughs> that's why I didn't choose any clothes because that is, that, that is one of my fear is because I can't like feel comfortable wearing like tiny clothes. So <laughs> yeah, I didn't choose any, but I think eventually I will. And one of my um habit is missing meals. Sometimes I forgot to eat. I'm not gonna lie. So um I only eat once I feel like my stomach is hurting and stuff like I'll be passing the whole day like we found like feeling hungry or something. But I think that is my biggest like mistake to do but i'm fighting over that and also um i'm fighting with high sodium food because i cook like the way my culture i use to like back home so they kind of use like high sodium to cook food and uh, i think last is i'm struggling to sleep like eight hours that is one of my like bad habits so as we move forward this week it literally is looking at the choices we're making what we're doing what we're saying yes to what we're saying no to and it's asking ourselves okay does this move me closer to the life i want closer to the butt i want closer to the health i want or does it move me further away And it's really simple. We run every choice, every decision by that. And when when it's no, it's okay. If this moves me further away from my goals, it's a heck no. It's H-E double hockey six no. I'm not doing it. If it moves me closer to my goals, then yes, I can do it. And it's really starting to train ourselves and develop these habits because when we develop the habits, the success habits of health, the success habits of any area of life, we're going to have success in that area. It's the bad habit that stop us from having success. And so I'm so excited to see you dive into this exercise this week and to start seeing the fruit of it in your life. It really is, you know, working in business and working with people for over 20 years, it literally is a few things that people are doing that are keeping them from succeeding in a certain area. Just a few things. And if we start tweaking those little things, you can start seeing massive, massive results.